Welcome. Tiling, right? So we're ready. We're waterproofed, um, all cleaned up. What steps do we need to do before we're totally ready to really start tiling? So one of the things you want to know before you really get everything ready to put on the wall, one, you want to know your layout of your tile. So I have these tiles, which are um, nice and long that I'm going to do vertically. So what I've done on each wall is determine exactly where I want the tiles to fall. Um, for example, on this wall, um, I wanted a tile to go right up to this wall. It's a little crooked. So whenever we straighten it out, I made sure that this tile, wherever it was gonna be with a, with a vertical line, was going to come and be one whole tile where I didn't have to cut any little strips to fill in. So what I was doing is, okay, where's the furthest point that I'm going to need a full tile? Found that, made my vertical line here. So this is where I'm gonna start on this wall. Okay, that's my layout of this wall. And then from there, I took tiles with the spacers that I'm going to use. So you wanna make sure that you are uh, making the room for the spacers. So I'm gonna use these spacers and they are a leveling style of spacer. So um, what does that look like? You put these um, in between your tiles and then this goes in between the two tiles. I'll show you on this side, it's probably better. Let's look. Um, this is what these look like. So you put them in your tile and you have a little tool that you crimp until it makes it completely level. So. Um, these tiles aren't huge, but I am going to use those in between probably one or two on each to make sure I'm still looking good. So when you're laying out your tile, make sure you have the, exactly the spacers you want to use so that when you know where you're going to end on this side, you don't have a very tiny piece left. So I went ahead and did that. And on each side I have, um, at least half of a tile. Perfect. Right? Okay. Second thing after you do your layout. So you wanna do that on every side. So if you look over here, um, what worked out best for here, including these holes, is that I'm gonna start with the edge of the tub. So to come here is over half a tile. Again, that's great. At the edge, it's over half a tile. Great. So, um, and because of the dimensions, this one worked out the same. Second thing you wanna do is make sure that we are really focusing on that first row of tile. Whether you're doing vertically or horizontal, you, they need to be level. And this is the tricky part. If your tub isn't level, you still want your tile to be level. Now that may look weird. Uh, this tub isn't quite level. This way it's almost level, but it, it bends down a little bit this way. It's probably worse. So what that means, this is the lowest point of my first row of tile that is going to be against the tub. So my second goal after I've done the layout, what we're gonna do now is to take my tile with your spacer that is going to go along the tub. Remember, we don't want the tile directly resting on the tub whenever we install that. So. What am I doing now? Now my goal is to get my lowest point of a full tile and then mark my level line all the way around so that my tile is level no matter what my tub is doing because um, it looks better to the eye even though it's not matching the tub and then it's going to meet up at the top. So if you have one of those laser levelers or you wanna go buy one, do it. I have one, but it's not at this house, so that's okay. If you have a longer level, this works just fine. So here's what we're gonna do, is I'm gonna take that lowest point with my spacer, and that's gonna be my full tile, so that when I get to the higher point of the tub, I'm cutting a little bit off my tiles, but the tops of them are gonna be level. That's what I want. You can also start, um, with half a tile, you know, where it makes it less obvious that you're cutting some off, that's fine. I want a full one at the tub, your preference. Um, so that's our first step uh, before we're ready to get everything tiled.
Okay, I wanted to show just an example that actually came up on my Instagram. I really like this guy. Um, but if you see, he did a post where he said he had a brain fart where this was the exact issue. So if you look really closely, you can see that in that corner, those lines aren't matching up. So what he had to do was take all that tile uh, off that wall to redo that. So that's what we're trying to avoid. We want everything to meet up in every corner to be at the same height. So here's just a pretty quick view of, um, like I said, my lowest tile. That's what I start. And then I'm just going to go from there all the way around uh, to mark out my level line. Okay, there is the first level line around the tub. So this is for sure my lowest point. So you see, this is going to guide me when I'm putting in my tile of where I want to stay level. So I just want to give an example. So this line, that's perfect, right above this with my spacer. Here you can see, hopefully you can see that, we have maybe half inch lower than what that's gonna be. So what will happen is the bottom half inch of this will be trimmed off to stick um, to make sure the tops are level. And then from there on out, every tile that you put above it will stay level. And then this side ends up being um, about the same as this one. So um, actually this tilts just a hair down on this end, just like this side. But because this is also slanted a little bit this way, the top of this, um, this ends up being um, taller than this side. Hope that, that makes sense. So again, here will be also about another half inch being cut off, but um, the goal is to make that top line level. Now, if you're doing a shower, a lot of people will start like um, a piece of wood that's level that they start um, tiling on top of that. But if you have a tub, I just, I, I, I don't think that's really worth it because I'm, I can make a level line and go from there. So, um, that's what we're going to do. So that's how you do it if your tub or if anything's not level. Um, I recommend having like a level line for that first one. And then the, the third part, I guess, before we start tiling is which wall do you want to start on? I'll give you two reasons why I'm going to start on this one. Um, it's the longest wall. Sometimes we just want to get the big one out of the way, right? That's not a really good reason. Really, first of all, um, I do want to get this whole wall finished um, where this wall goes in first, then this wall is up against the tile this way. Um, it's not really supporting anything. I mean, your tile is going to stick to the wall or it's not, so that's not really the thing. But if you've ever noticed where tile meets up, you can see a seam, right? So let's say, take this off. Let's say I did the side wall first and then I'm bringing this tile up to it. That vertical seam from the viewpoint of where you're gonna look at the shower is more visible than if I do the back wall first and then come with this one on top. I hope that's coming across on the camera. So it's going to depend on your shower if, for example, the door maybe we're behind and people or other people or you, because you care, are going to be viewing the shower mostly from this direction, then maybe I would do that wall first so that then the seam, you don't see the seam as much because it's going to be covered by the other tile. So um, if your door to your shower looks this way, I recommend doing the back wall first, and then each of the sides will um, meet the tile and cover up those cuts. So um, I'm gonna start on this, and then my goal for tiling this wall is to tile up to the nook all the way around, and then finish all my main tile on all the walls. And then I'm gonna come back and do the nook where the way I have designed it is I want this back vertical portion to be a matte black subway tile. So that's gonna match my matte black fixtures. And then on the sides, people, I've seen people do two different things. 
they either do um, the same tile as the back, so I could do the sides with the black, or they'll continue the pattern with their main tile, where since I'm going vertically, then those tiles would be like this. Hopefully you can, that makes sense. So it's almost like it's wrapping around this, and that's what I'm gonna do. So um, since I'm using the metal piece that's gonna be the trim around here, I am not going to do the um, tile while I'm doing the wall. Okay, I'm gonna save that when I can take a little more time. So I'm just gonna finish the tile all the way up and just make it um, vertical along these edges and then go just up to these points and just a hair below, probably a 16th inch below, because when you put in the, when we put in these trim pieces, um, we wanna make sure that nothing's bumped up where all that hard work we did to make this just slightly pointing down for water flow is messed up by tile, okay? So that's the goal. All right, here we are marking our tile at the level line. So I went ahead and I'm gonna mark both sides of the tile because this is pretty uneven. You could probably just make a straight line and not matter a whole lot, depends on the size and your tile and which way you're doing. So then I make a straight line in between the two cuts and then I'm going to go onto the tile saw and cut those. Here I am using a super cheap tile saw to do this whole job. So don't worry if this is all you have access to. Um, they work just fine. And uh, yeah, just use eye protection and plenty of water. Okay, time to mix up our thin set. We did this in the last video, but if um, you want a little refresher, this is just some thin set. So every bag is gonna have a little bit different times, but you're gonna pour in your water, pour in your thin set, mix it for some time, let it sit or slake for some time, and you come back and mix it just a little bit more, and that's it. Okay, putting up your first tiles. So we have some goals that we wanna do here with our tile. So you wanna get the thin set on the wall first. And um, these are a little tricky when you're right by the tub because you're trying not to make a mess and you don't wanna scratch anything. So expect that this first line is going to take you hours and you can only be pleasantly surprised. This is the slowest thing you're gonna do in your tiling job, in my opinion. So. Um, you take your um, notched trowel, which depends on the size of your tile, and there's lots of things online that'll tell you if you have this size tile, use this size trowel. So that's what I'm doing, and on the wall, you put it with the flat side first, get a good coat, and then you go back and use the notched side to have some ridges, okay? And then on the tile, each tile we put up, we're gonna back butter every time do it. It's annoying. If you have a helper that'll do that for you, this will go so much faster. Um, but once you put the tile up, what you're going to do now is they call it collapsing the ridges, flattening the ridges, letting the air out of the ridges, whatever you want to call it. So if my ridges go left to right, I'm going to very slightly wiggle my tile up and down. So that's going to collapse those ridges and it almost creates like a suction. So if you do this, and if this is your first time doing it, what I want you to do is put that tile on, wiggle it a little bit in the opposite direction of your ridges, and then try to pull that tile off. It should be very difficult to get that tile off. So that is our goal. So essentially what we're doing here is I'm using those little spacers on the bottom, and then I'm using my leveling spacers between each. Um, and I'm also putting my spacers on every side of my tile, even though I'm not doing those tile yet. Um, because if you have some thin set at the edge of those tiles and you forgot that you didn't put your leveling spacer in there when you need to do the next row, you're not going to get that in there. So um, do it. Make sure it's straight when you put it in there. Uh, but we're, yeah, so here I'm using the crimping tool to make sure they're all flat and level and great and everything's to my liking. And that's our goal. So I'm going to speed this up a bit.
Okay, I'm not going to bore you with every single tile, but I did want to just show you setting up the second row and then every row after this will be the same. So what I like to do is I like to set up a next tile and make a little mark on the wall so I know where my thin set's going to go to. And yeah, just keep trucking. I just wanted to show kind of how this ended up going. I cleaned up the bottom a little bit, so now we're ready to keep going. So my my goal for today, um, I have three hours today and I wanna get the whole rest of the wall, not any part of the niche, just the wall. So what I'm doing first to get, kind of get prepped before I mix my thin set is I'm looking at these pieces right here that have to be cut. And I'm gonna go ahead and pre-cut what I feel comfortable with. Now what does that mean? So um, I'm gonna cut this tile first and then I'm gonna cut these three next ones. They're pretty easy. That's a flat one. I'm not going to cut this next one just yet because I want to make sure um, I get this one installed and then I can cut just this one and then keep going with the full ones because I really do want it to be just right. So it shouldn't change a whole lot. Um, you could probably go ahead and cut this one also, but um, the rest on this row will be full pieces. And then moving up ahead of that, I'll, I should only have to cut two pieces, this side and this side, until I get to the top again and then I'll repeat. So um, I'm going to go ahead and mark these to get cut and go out and cut them and then mix the thin set and get going. Okay, I just wanted to show this part of a tile, marking it and then cutting it because I'm cutting an L shape out of a tile. So on the tile saw, that's going to be pretty easy, but here I, I made a mark at the top of the tile where I wanted it to the L to end, and then I made the mark on the side of the L, and then I just connected it with a straight edge. Now let's cut this out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the smaller edge, and I'm going to make, um, not a relief cut, but I'm going to make that first cut that I'm, that I'm going to go down to from the other side. So now I start up at the top for the other part of the L, and just cut right down until I get to that other cut that I made. And you go very slowly when you get to the end to make sure nothing chips out or nothing kind of flies out of your hand. Okay, let's have a quick pause, see that little L. All right, back at it. I put that little L piece in first, and then I added in a couple more tiles to the side just to make sure it stayed securely. And then I'm gonna put in these next three tiles that I cut on my little um, hand saw. And then I'm gonna mark and cut the other L and just keep going. All right, check-in time. So nothing greatly new has happened so just standard tiling all the way up we'll get a, a picture of how this looks now and then down below the tub so um these two main walls are finished and it is time to do the faucet wall so i thought i would uh, kind of go over some things and film at least this portion because it, it, it was a little trickier it's going to be a little bit tricky um so uh, I'm keeping the same tile placement as I am as I did over here because I want it to look very uniform. You know, I want everything to look pretty even. So I'm starting my tile in the same place I started it on this side. Hopefully, you can see this side. So um, I already have um, lined up my tiles with my bottom spacers. So um, kind of what I've already done is line this up where I want it and I've trimmed off all the pieces just like I did on the whole level um, portion all the way around. So this bottom line is the level line that I created all the way around. So I'm still going off that line so that this first line all the way around the shower is at the exact same level. So we went over that. So that's what I've done on this first tile, second tile, third tile, and I, I tape them up, you know, and put my spacers in like we did before. Then. Um, let me get this fourth tile that I cut on the tile saw. Um, 
I took my plate cover off and I lined up my tile, drew some lines and marked out what I wanted to cut. So I did this on my tile saw, um, which is not difficult to do if you have a tile saw. It just takes time. You have to kind of um, go in and put, I call them relief cuts, but they're not really because you're not breaking it off, but you're just kind of going in and sawing off line by line by line. But uh, you can do it. This, this one tile probably took me 10 minutes total. So, um, you know, I, I got it to where I think it's going to go. It's, it's going to fit in just like that. Hopefully we can see that. I'll get a better view whenever I start thin setting these in and the thin set's going to bring it out to that part. So, um, that's where we are. So I'm going to go ahead and film this portion. Um, in case you want to see how that's going to go and then um, maybe again once we get up to the faucet hole. So where my tile lined up also is the hole is going to be right here. I don't think we'll see. I, I'm not going to, I didn't want to mark this other tile till I had it for sure in place, but I'm not sure if the tile that's going on this side for the tub portion is gonna to need to be cut here. We'll see, it will need to be cut this way, but we'll draw it when we get there. So hopefully it's all making sense and it's coming together. So start thin setting. Just wanted to show this little bit of um, prep. I, I came in with a, a smaller piece to put on the thin set on the wall. So here we are putting in the part that's gonna go around the handle and it needed to cut out just a hair more on the tile saw. So I'm going to go out, do that, come back, try it out. And success. So now I'm going, now that everything's in place, I'm going to um, now measure for my next piece that I need to cut. Really, you just put your piece in where it's going to go with your spacers and then you mark your two marks that you need to make um, and then again cutting kind of a circular pattern i didn't need to cut the bottom part and i got out my cover plate for the handle to make sure everything still looked good and it does and then i just keep going along the rest of the wall all right let's cut the hole for the shower head so I, my, where my shower head needed the whole cutout, did not line up on the edge of a tile. That's fine. All you're going to need is a hole saw, a diamond hole saw, and it'll say that it's needed, it's used, excuse me, for porcelain tile. And then you're also going to need an arbor kind of bit, I guess you'd call it, but that's what, how you're going to connect it to your drill. So Make the marks on your tile and mark out exactly where the center is going to go. It's pretty easy. I like to put two pieces of tape on it and mark it on the piece of tape. And then you take the arbor or you take kind of like a small drill, I recommend, and kind of make a tiny, tiny little center hole. You're not going through it. It's just kind of getting a starter. And that lets you line up your arbor and hole saw into that center point. And then what you want to do is make sure it stays wet. That's very, very important. This stuff gets real hot and it'll ruin your bit. So I just got a little water bottle with some holes in the top and I was squeezing it on top every few minutes. Now you get that drill and you want to stay straight up and down over the hole, but also you give it a small twist around in the hole. And I'm so sorry my head's in the way, but keep kind of putting some water on it and it'll go it's very easy it goes through nice and clean but just kind of put a little pressure on the edge around you're not pushing really hard the drills doing all the work um but it's i think that just is works a little better than just going straight down the whole time so just keep making those little indentions all the way around and then you'll finally get through the whole piece of tile It took a second to get this popped off of here, but let's see how this fits. All right, I dig it. Let's see how the whole wall looks.
It's time for the niche. The first thing we want to do is get that edging cut. So let's go over that a bit. Here's what the edging is going to look like. And there's two ways to cut the edging. You can either cut them at 45 degree angles, like it's drawn here, which is a little more difficult, or you can also what I'd call a butt joint. So you just um, would cut one solid piece from the bottom, one solid piece from the top, and then in between the other two, you just make 90 degree cuts. Um, I think both look great. I was just trying to make this a little more difficult. So I went ahead and went with the 45 degree cuts. So uh, what we're measuring here is I took a measurement of the longest portion of those 45 degree cuts. So if we're looking at the right side, that measurement is from the very bottom on the right side to the very top on the right side. So you want to stay consistent when you're measuring these. But that's the portion I'm going to measure on my cuts. Okay, to start off on the saw, I'm going to make my first angled cut. So this is what I'm going to have to measure from. So I'm going in at my 45 degree angle on my saw. And let me add a note here to um, have a saw where you can do the 45 degree angle both ways. Um, this saw, I could only do this from this one angle. So I had to do all my cuts or half my cuts, excuse me, backwards and upside down. So that's what I'm going to highly recommend. So now that that first portion is cut, that's again, if it helps you to draw it, which I always do, that's the part you're going to measure from. See how that's angled off now? Now I can start making my next cut. Please excuse the pajamas, but this piece of aluminum trim was nice and long. So I wanted to make sure since I'm doing the 45 degree angle one, um, if it's not perfectly straight, you're not going to get a good 45 degree angle. So um, I put something underneath to make sure it stays nice and level the whole way. All right. So remember, measure the same way on the piece that you measured for the niche. So I'm measuring the bottom angle to the bottom angle. And I'm going to make a, a mark with a pencil because that's what shows up the best on this black one. And then I'm going to make my second cut. Okay, if you have a good saw, all you do is turn your saw the other way and make your other 45 degree angle. So what I'm doing here is a lot of mental gymnastics to try to figure out exactly how I have to hold this piece upside down and backwards to make my second cut. But I think you get the idea. And what you want to do on these aluminum pieces is make sure they're very slippery. Make sure you're holding them very well uh, where they need to be. So you're really pushing it um, against that backstop that you have. And you get your saw going full speed, but then you slowly go through the piece. And that's the best way to cut these. All right, let's have a looky-loo at this piece. So that is the bottom, and you'll see that it looks just like the drawing. Okay, just repeat that for all four. It's not difficult. You just want to make sure you're keeping track of the exact angles and measurements. So here is what it looks like. I have dry fit it into the niche to make sure everything fits together how I want. Sorry, I don't want move anything. Okay, so this is gonna go in last and I'll show you about that. Um, so I've cut all my pieces so that while I'm doing this, I'm not waiting on anything because these are a little trickier to keep in place. I just wanna have a nice smooth, knock on wood, uh, go of this. So I've numbered one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way around. And I have everything laid out in order that I'm going to put them in. So the order that I'm going to put them in is I'm still going with my overall theme of water moving the easiest path down and out. So this is what I'm doing first, the very bottom layer. And then I'm going to do um, the sides up to here. And then I'm going to do the top. And then I'm going to put the, these upper sides in that will kind of hold this in place but um, I want 
this to be a full level across and I want it to match at the top, if that makes sense. So if I did the bottom and then the whole top, this top would, this, and to the whole side, excuse me, this top would come over and end where it hits the side. And that wouldn't match what this looks like. So I want the bottom and the top to match and the two sides to match. So I'm putting in the bottom first. I'm gonna go up to here, put in the top. I'm gonna tape it in place just to make sure we're not sagging or doing anything weird. And then finally put these pieces in last as kind of that. Then the back, the back I'm doing last, but I'm also going to wait until all of this dries before I do the back. Um, you don't have to do that. The only reason I'm doing that is, well, there's two reasons. One, it's a different tile. Um, so once this is all dry, I'm gonna get a perfect layout of what that's gonna look like. But the second reason is once you put these tiles in, that kind of gets a little heavy and I absolutely do not want the weight hitting on these tiles and messing up the very small um, direction I have where the, the water's gonna come out, if you remember. So I'm gonna get all the side done, be done, and then do the back. Um, a little note about the thin set before we talk about the edging is that to do this part, I aired on the side of a little bit thicker than I normally do. It's barely, I don't, this isn't like clumpy, dry, thick. It's just, I wanted to make sure that this wasn't too wet um, because of my vertical and completely against gravity tile that I want to hold in place. It works a little bit better if it's a little thicker. Again, we're not all the way off in the edge either way, but if we're, if we're kind of in the center, I got it just a little bit thicker. And I know people say peanut butter and they use all these phrases but I've had lots of different peanut butter thicknesses. So the thickest peanut butter, like that natural stuff, that's what we're talking about. So, okay, there are two ways to put these in, probably more, but let's talk about the two main ways. Number one is to put this in first, wherever you're going to use it. So if I were putting this on the bottom, I would put it in first, either some people use glue or like a, um, What's that liquid nails kind of stuff? Some people just tape it where it stays. I don't think that stays very well. And then you tile up to it. Um, that's fine. The second way is that you would put in your tile where this is going to join, and then you slide it under into the thin set, get it where you want it, adjust the tile while it's still wet, and you're done. I'm gonna do that second option. And the reason I've decided that is because of where it is. If I were doing this, which I decided not to do, but if I were doing this on the side, um, I would have put this in first and then had a, I'd set it perfectly level and I'd get my line and I'd tile up right up to it. Great. Why I don't like that for here is that if this were in place, there's a lip here and it's really hard to get your thin set in there the way you want it. That's the only reason I'm not doing it. So do whatever that you think you might want to do. So um, what I'm going to be doing on this one is getting my bottom tile in, putting this in. Same thing on each of the sides. This is the last thing I'm going to put in because you, you use the thin set and I'll put in a drawing. Uh, here are some drawing skills. So hopefully you can see this. It's like looking at it from the side. So I have my tile in place on top of my wall. The thin set is all underneath. And then I'm going to take that, it's called an L channel, is the trim I have, the style. And it just slides right underneath into that thin set. So last but not least, so this is the bottom part, is um, spacers. I have both of my spacers ready, whatever I might want to do. So um, this is the spacer I have been using to keep this spacing. So um, I'm going to use it backwards, which is not quite exactly, but it'll work. Um, to hold these in place and then if sometimes I had to, okay, so this portion that was going into the wall with the rest of them is twice as thick as the tip. So um, by putting two of these together, which it's easier when they're on the wall, um, then it'll, it'll be the same depth. Or um, I might use these smaller ones if I want. Um, these sideways, are the same thickness as this. So I have lots of options, whatever kind of holds everything a little bit better is what I'll be using. And my thin set's already mixed up. I have my water ready for cleanup. Gosh, I hope that's it. So let's get going. Okay, one more note before we get going. Um, when I mix my thin set, 
a little thicker, drier. I like to have a lid handy um, so that if I'm having to go do something, find something, find a pen, whatever, I'll put the lid on it because I don't want it to dry out anymore. Usually with Vincent, I'm not really worried about it. If it gets a little drier, it's still gonna be good, but I'm kind of at the thickest that I want it. So I just wanna have my lid handy um, so that it doesn't dry out anymore because this stuff does dry out pretty quickly. Um, so I just took this off and we'll get started. Okay, my wonderful camera angle. I am just finishing up the bottom row of tile, same way we've done it. Now I'm going to take that bottom piece and very slowly and gently have it in place and just slide it underneath that tile. And then I'm making sure I'm good center wise. I'm making sure I don't have a big lip where water is going to catch. And I'd like to have it right against the tile kind of in the same plane. And that's it. Okay, the hubs came in to chat, but now I'm doing the top portion. So I've put in three quarters of my tile up each side. Can't really see that. But I'm putting in my tile on the top and to hold it, each one in place while I'm doing this, I'm using two pieces of tape. One in the very back where I kind of make a um, 90 degree little piece where that's going to hold it up in the back. And then I'm holding it in place in the front with a piece of tape. And then when I'm ready to push in my trim piece, I'm going to just take the tape off of the top part, just where it's connected to that top tile, enough to push in my trim push in the trim, again, get it exactly where I want, and then I'm going to retape it to make sure everything stays nice and neat. Yeah, now I'm just gonna put in those last two tiles that go in the very top, and then I'm going to push that trim in just like the other sides, and then that is it. And there she is, folks. Let's let this sit and then we'll do the inside. Okay, for the last part, the back wall of Nietzsche isn't really that different than the walls that we did. But the difference is the spacers that I'm using on these subway tiles are, they look like little crosses. And you can use those either on the outside of the tile as spacers, or since I'm using these in a um, uh, just very mid-century modern straight up and down pattern, uh, you put them in each corner and it helps keep you vertically and horizontally straight. So um, I just measured my center line and I wanted my middle tile to be right there. I again laid these out like I did before and I cut a little bit off the bottom so I wouldn't have a tiny sliver at the top and that's it. There she is, tiled, edged, and waiting. So next will be all the finishes. So the grouting, sealing, putting on the fixtures, everything like that to finish this up.